So praise God, tonight is deliverance night. And as I said, there's a lot of people's need deliverance. We're going to the book of Ephesians, the sixth chapter, and the twelfth verse. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Now listen, beloved. The word of God, Apostle Paul said, for we wrestle. How many know what wrestling means? We used to call it tussling. Huh? Strive one against another. So according to Paul's thinking, we are in a wrestle. Well, amen. How many believe that tonight? You know, we love, praise God, and many times, in our subconscious mind, we push it ahead of us or behind us. But I thank God that we are serving a right now, God. Not tomorrow, but tonight. How many believe that? Now, Paul is bringing to our attention, he's opening our eyes to something. For we wrestle not against flesh. Come on. And blood. And blood. But against principalities. But we're wrestling against principalities. Against powers. Against powers. Against the rulers of the, the darkness of this against world. Against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Against Now, wait just a moment. Now, the Bible said the devil is the prince. He's the God of this world. He's the prince of the air. Some people talk about a devil's hell. But hell does not belong to the devil. And he's not in hell. The Bible said he's the prince of the air. His kingdom is between here and God's kingdom. How many believe it tonight? Read. Against spiritual wickedness in high and places. And against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now this is what we're wrestling against. Read. Wherefore, well, take unto you the whole armor of God. Now why is Paul saying this? Give me 1 Peter 5 and 8. Be sober. The word of God says be sober. Be vigilant. This means to be in your right mind. Be watchful. That's what the word vigilant means, to be watchful, observant. Read. Because your adversary, the because devil. Because we have an enemy, which is our adversary. The devil. And the Bible said he's the devil. As a roaring lion. And he's going about as a roaring lion. Walketh about. Walking about. Seeking whom he may devour. Seeking whom he may devour. And the word devour means to be destroyed. That's enough. Now, beloved, this is a message in these two scriptures. Paul, let us know what we are striving against. Let us know what we are wrestling with. Then Peter warns us. Do you know tonight that there's a lot of warnings in the Bible? Now if a person could get saved and it was impossible for him to backslide and go to hell, then we wouldn't need the warnings. Spiritual witness in high places. We have warning after warning. Jesus said, don't be deceived. Beware of false prophets. Why? Then Peter said, be soberly. This means to be in your right mind. A drunk man is not in his right mind. Man on the influence of dope is not in his right mind, so God wants us in our right mind. Then he says to be watchful. Uh, 
I, am I getting over to you tonight? Because we have an adversary. Somebody that's not in love with us. Someone that don't like us. And is out to do everything he can to harm us. To destroy us. And the damn our soul of hell. And he's a dirty, low-down fighter. He don't abide by rules. He'll hit below the belt. He'll stop at nothing to, to damn your soul to hell. This reason we as human beings need to wake up. See, God loves us. Regardless of your condition, God loves you. And he'll prove that he loves us by giving heaven the best, his son. Jesus gave his life that you and I could be delivered tonight. Now I say he's a dirty fighter. He had come at you any way that he can. He'll come at you through your mother, your husband, your wife, your boss man, any way he can to destroy you. Anything that he can put on you to discourage you or to turn you around, he'll do it and he'll stop nothing short of cancer. Or knock your eyes out. Now, I think it's high time that we as human beings need to wake up and realize that the devil is not in love with us. Now, you listen to me tonight. And many of you on the sign of my voice, you are a slave to Satan tonight. But I come to bring you the good news that Jesus Christ can set you free. But you're going to have to want to be free. You believe me to say mine? Now I said the night is deliverance night and God will deliver you if you want to be delivered. Now everybody's not bound by drugs. But you still need deliverance. Everybody's not bound by alcohol but you still need deliverance. How many believe it tonight? The word salvation means deliverance. Jesus came to set men and women free. God wants you to have joy, peace, and happiness right down here in this present world. And you must face the fact if you're not having that joy and that peace, pray and make up in your mind that you're going to have what God has provided for us. So I'm abound by the demon of poverty. Well, amen. Word of God said, Beloved, I would that the man prosper. Be in health as thy soul prosper. And the reason a lot of you are bound because you won't do what the Word of God says. How many believe it tonight? How can we believe God and refuse to obey His Word? Jesus said, Why call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things I say? How many believe it tonight? Some of you need deliverance from tradition. You got a certain way of doing things, and you've been doing it that way so long. Kind of awkward to change, but if you want the blessing of God, you're going to have to change. How many believe that tonight? And Jesus is our change. How many believe it tonight? Huh? Thank God that's liberty, that's victory in Jesus. And you can have that liberty, you can have that freedom tonight in Jesus Christ if you want to. Amen. Why do you think Paul said put on the whole arm of God? It's not enough just to get saved. It's not enough just to repent of your sins. This reading, Pastor Paul said, I die daily. Huh? Mean itself got to die out. Some of you pray got to bow by the flesh. You're trying to save God, but 
Pray God you're making provision for the flesh. If you can serve God and the flesh be satisfied, you will be all right. But the Bible said, if any man come up to me, he got to deny shall. You want the flesh to be glorified. You want people to look upon you as some great one in God. Huh? That's the flesh. You believe it's shame, man. And before you ever be able to enjoy the blessing of God and do a work for God, you got to be delivered. We only what God make out of us. Some people that serve God, if God will let them hold a position that they want. But I believe Pastor Paul said we're bought with a price. We are no more our own. That means that we can't do what we want to do. And we can't go where we want to go. Some of you are bound by stars. And you need deliverance. I preach from time to time, and some of you men still can't believe the Word of God. Now, the Word of God says it's a shame for men to have long hair, but you're bound by a star, and you need deliverance. Got that junk hanging down over the back of your shirt. I'm talking about deliverance tonight. Huh? Well, I gave you a pattern the other night. We had two young men left here. Went to the service. And when they both come back, they both had a nice haircut. Looked decent. Looked like young men. I'm talking about deliverance. You can make all kinds of excuses, but when you go in Uncle Sam's army, you're going to get a haircut. Now, if men can do it for man. Why can't we do it for God? There are some bound by grandma's religion. You're bound by denominationism. And that brings on fear. Because they done told you that's the only thing right. It ain't about 60, 70 years old. But that's the only thing right. And they'll preach if you leave this, you leave the church. But I believe the church is the body of Christ with Jesus being the head. You believe it? Say amen. I want you to know tonight that the church is not a building. Well, glory to God. But I believe the Bible says a group will call out and baptize believers. You believe it? Say amen. That believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Well, glory. Somebody need deliverance tonight. You believe it? Say amen. And I want to pray God let you know that Jesus is a mighty fine deliverer. You believe it? Say amen. I think we ought to make up in our mind that we want to go to heaven and we got to go God's way. Oh, some of y'all don't see what I'm talking about. Come on, Deuteronomy 27 and 16. I'm, I'm going to show it to you. You can't be saved by grandma's religion. You can't be saved by mama's religion. You believe it's shame, man. Cursed what? be he that said it like. Listen what the word of God says. Not Ella Murray, but the word of God. Said how we know that Ella Murray right. Read the road map. That's all I'm doing is preaching you the word of God. You believe it's shame, man. And if you're too dumb to sit there and listen and believe the word of God, you're too dumb to go to heaven. The Bible said, curse be he. The Bible said, curse be ye. Talking about you. That said it light. That said it's light. By his father or his By mother. By his father. This is what my dad said, and you know he's a cigarette sucker. Cursed be he that said it light. By what? By his father. By his father said my mother was this, and I promised her on her deathbed that I wouldn't leave, that you shouldn't have told her that. Always leave yourself open for some more light. As we come in the light, we walk in the light. Huh? 
And ain't nothing going to take the place of holiness. And I dare you to say I'm not preaching it. Ain't nothing better. I said ain't nothing better than holiness. How many believe it tonight? Huh? Follow peace of all men, holiness without which no man shall see the law. And if you're not doing this, you need deliverance when now. All we got to stay with the book. Some of you bound by traditions, bound by religions, bound by denominationism. And you need deliverance tonight, and you're going to have to be delivered. Bound is being bound. Amen. What's the difference being bound by our religion that won't preach you the truth than being bound by drugs? Which is what's of being bound by grandma's religion that won't produce salvation than of being bound by alcohol? You know grandma dips enough. When I never seen nothing wrong with snuff, nobody asked you what you saw. Bible declared in 1 Corinthians 3 and 16 said, Know ye not that your body is the temple of God for the Spirit of God to dwell in? And the Bible says, Not element, any man defile this temple, him shall God destroy. And if you defile in the temple, God going to destroy you, except you get deliverance. You believe it's shame man. Fornication defiles the temple of God. Tobacco churn defiles the temple of God. Lust defiles the temple of God. Some of the old women sits around the church. You don't mean a thing but trying to get you a husband. Some of you little girls too. Can't hear the preacher and tell them I say, look, look, look how handsome Johnny is. You better get your mind off of Johnny because if you don't be very careful, you and Johnny both going to burn in the lake. If something bothering you and you can't get your mind, you can't get still and listen to the word of God, you need deliverance. I don't care if you've been testifying, you feel with the Holy Ghost for the last 40 years. This is the hour of deliverance. Brother, something wrong with you and you can't keep your mind on the Lord. Some people pray on the word of God, begin to go forth, they got to walk. That's what I said the other night. I want everybody not at home, not in the restroom, not in the back room. You need to be in here when the word of God's going for. You believe it's shame on it. How can you survive except you eat? How can you survive spiritually without the word of God? You believe it's shame on No wonder some of you don't have no faith. No wonder some of you in poverty. You need to get in there where you can hear the word of God, where you can obey God and be delivered. You believe it's shame on it. Smoke the fall in it, temple. I don't see where smoking is wrong. You do quit lying. I said you do quit lying. Well, you let me come in your house and smoke it up. Get me an old rag and just set it afire and smother it. Then let the smoke come out all over your house. You'll get mad because if you smoke, you'll get mad. Don't tell me you won't. You're smoking up my house. Well, you're smoking up God's house. What's the difference? And don't tell me that lie. You don't see where it's wrong. Who want to wear clothes full of smoke? Huh? Do you know what the word of God says? James said, do you think the scripture says in vain? James 4 and 5. God wasn't joking. We got out of the Oh, I was just playing. Don't come here with playing with me. Man, we don't play by salvation. No, sir. I was just joking. You just lied. If you didn't tell the truth, you lied. How many believe it tonight? Huh? You know you don't want nothing smoked up, and God doesn't either. Amen. I don't see why chewing the back is wrong. Oh, but you let me take it and just take it and smear it all upside of you, the walls of your house. And that's what you're doing to the Lord. Look, don't believe it. Look at the fellow that smoke. Look at his teeth. 
just as yellow. Don't you know the walls of down on the inside is yellow too? Amen. You need deliverance, bud. So, oh, I can quit. Well, why don't you? It's not doing you any good. And the stuff is too high. Now, nah, why don't you quit? I'll tell you why you can't. Because a demon got you bound. Peter said, watch me. Watch me. Through that little old instant cigarette, he'll damn your soul to hell. Through that little old boyfriend, he'll damn your soul to hell. You better get your mind on God. Through that snooze, He'll damn your soul to hell. Brother, the devil works under the cover. He works overtime to destroy you. We have an adversary. And brother, he like nothing better than to take your little beautiful face and make them. Just tear the pieces. Going about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. I could just see him, brother, when you get that serene and start shooting that dope. I could just see that old demon laughing. Amen. Some of you bound to fear. I know Anna so and so is preaching the truth. Listen, a peanut pad is a peanut pad. I don't care why you meet up with one, it's still a peanut pad. Is that right? Amen. A peanut pad is a peanut pad. Amen. And you can come and hear a man not skipping and twisting, but preaching the word of God just exactly like it is. And you said, That's the word. But grandma told me if I leave this, I'd be done left to church. Don't you got something enough to read and hear what thus said the word of God? And you'd be surprised if people found the fear. And one lady come over and she was, oh man, she was rejoicing, getting fat and just praising God. Lord help these pastors can't win folk yourself through fear. I don't preach fear, I preach faith. Huh? And they start prophesying over. There's a bunch of child when the pastor's wife says so and so. It happened. She prophesied about so and so and they died. The Bible said we're all going to die. So Jesus come back and we that are saved be changed. Huh? So the thing about it, dying is not so bad if you get right before you die. Huh? Well, amen. Don't you know I'd rather die going on with God than going back to something dead? Ain't nothing happening. Huh? Amen. Somebody plays it like a bunch of old buzzards. Sitting around waiting for something to die. Amen. That's different than the buzzard and the dove. Hey Amen. That's who. The buzzard likes some dove like Pete. He looks, that old buzzard. The buzzard don't even light on a green tree. At least I don't believe I ever seen one. He gets on something dead. Ain't nothing dead. He just get on a dead limb and sit around there and look and stretch his neck waiting for something to die. But you see that dove, he just. I'm going to give it somebody. I'm going to give it to Dove. Huh? I'm talking about deliverance. So I want him to preach it, and I got a tumor. I'm going to get around to it. But you know what? This preacher need to preach you some of this. Pray God in full summertime. When you're going to reach for that old tumor, it'll be gone. That's something you got to settle for. You start praying the prayer of faith for that tumor. You believe it? Say amen. Sometimes it takes a space of time to right and the wrong. Then the tumor disappear. How many believe what I'm talking about? Huh? God want to get you ready to go to heaven. You believe it? Say that. Why do you think Paul said put on the whole arm of God? Then he said that we might be able to stand. We in a warfare. Brother, we are rising. You got to fight for this thing. Paul said fight the good fight of faith. Listen, beloved, you don't get saved and sit out and relax and go to sleep. Brother, the devil is in there warring with you, trying to take your soul over, trying to take you over. And if he can ever get a control of your mind, he's got you. But what Paul wants us to know, this is not a fleshly warfare, so you can't fight the devil with guns and knives. You got to fight him with the spirit. You believe it, shame 
That's when you need to be saved. You need the word of God. The Bible says, take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray that you believe it, say amen. We need to know how to use the name of Jesus Christ. We need to know how to apply the blood. The devil can't stand the name of Jesus. He can't stand the Holy Ghost. And he so can't stand the blood. He that said it light. That said it light. By his father. You or ain't his got mother. no business setting light by nobody but Jesus. How many believe it tonight? Huh? Jesus is our light, which is the word of God. He's a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my pathway. You ain't got no business setting light but nobody else. Read. And all the people shall say, Amen. If you agree to it, say amen. Read. Cursed be he that removeth his neighbor's landmark. And all oh, the people wait, wait shall say, Stealing, stealing. When you go to bed, the landmark here, and you go, put it over there. This is my land. You need to live it. Bring it on down to the day. God bless somebody, and you want to cover it with that blessing. We don't need that. that. They should have killed out to me. The place of rejoice. See, it means something to live saved. It means something to have the victory. Huh? You got to learn how to rejoice when your brother being blessed will look like the light's being put out on you. Huh? Amen. Just like here the other week, praise God. Some people just ain't got no sympathy. This is the day and time that we're living in. Amen. Now, my lights was out four days. Amen. And some people was fussing and grumbling. They tell me some run down and took the meat down there and throwed it on the floor. Now, anybody with any comments, I know the men were working as hard as they could. We just had to wait. When the Bible said, after you've done the will of God, you have much need of patience. So, you know, I thought, says, man, I'd like to have my lights on because I had some meat. I, was, I didn't want to run. But I realized that those men out there, plus being out there, brother, it was cold. And have you ever worked in the cold and your fingers cold? You can't work as fast. Plus, everybody couldn't do that job. They needed skilled help. Brother, the garbage disposers, praying God, garbage men couldn't get up there and tie no love. They needed somebody that knew what they were doing. Huh? So I pray God, but a lot of people are just selfish, and a lot of people in the church the same way. If things don't go that way, brother, they huff, they mad, but God's got to have his way. You believe it? Say amen. Read. And all the people shall say amen. Read. Cursed be he that maketh the blind to wander out of the way. That's somebody standing in somebody else's way. They, they encouraged to go on with God. And you, you getting in that way, going to lead them astray. Well, I mean, the Bible said, cursed be you. That means that's the same as a wolf. That means the wrath of God is going to come up on you. Huh? But listen, beloved, God's a deliverer. This reading, Pastor Paul said, put on the whole arm of God that we might be able to stand what in the evil days. And we're living in evil days now. Amen. And pray God, our society is perplexed. They are puzzled with what happened. Amen. But it's nothing but the demon forces of hell, pray God, that's taking over the minds of the people. And pray God, our society is perplexed. They are puzzled with what happened. Amen. But it's nothing but the demon forces of hell, pray God, that's taking over the minds of the people. I mean, grown people are doing things that you can't even. Well, amen. Bring it, it just seems downright unreason. Like today, I heard, pray God, that a lady bring it, whooping a child and taking a screw down, and they find it embedded in his head. Now, no normal mother will do such. But can't you see how low that rascal is? Brother, he's dirty. I'm talking about our adversary, the devil. Brother, he's out to destroy both the kids and the grown-up. You believe it? Say amen. And he'll stop at nothing to do it. Anybody a lend an ear to him, anybody a yield that vessel to him, he'll use And that mother listen to the devil. She yield her members to the devil as instrument and cause her to try to destroy her own kid plus get her in trouble. You better wake up. We're not fighting against flesh and blood. 
But this is a spiritual warfare. The only way we can resist the enemy and the works of the devil is to be saved, covered with the blood, filled with the Holy Ghost. 